Is the Toyota GT86 a fast car? No. Does the 86 sound any good? Well, it kind of depends on who you ask. Can the 86 put a smile on my face? Every single time. I have been waiting so incredibly long to do this video and I'm not just talking about since the collection day video I'm talking about more than a year ago now ever since I tried to sell them on Deo ST I have been searching waiting dreaming for the day that I can finally review my new car <laughs> now where do I begin I think I'm gonna have a real hard time staying impartial to this video <laughs> Um, to kick it off though, I just need to give a massive shout out and thank you to my good friends Brandon and James for once again helping me out with the filming of this car over the past few days. Um, trust me guys, this video really wouldn't be up to our standards if it weren't for their help, if even possible at all. Um, and I also think the bizarre weather we've been having over the past few days has also played into our hands quite nicely, making for some awesome cinematic shots with the snow and everything, so that's quite nice. Right, but let's just start at the beginning. Where does the 86 come from? Well, Nick, what a stupid question to ask. There's a Toyota badge right there on the nose. Not exactly, though. This car actually shares a lot of its DNA with another Japanese brand. In fact, the heart of the 86 is a sideways popping 2-liter boxer motor built by the people at Subaru. Toyota have named this the 86, though, because it refers to the piston's bore and stroke dimensions, which are, yeah, you guessed it, 86 millimeters. And just for some extra authenticity, Toyota has made the diameter of the exhaust tips also 86 millimeters. And I can just imagine someone pitching that at one of the final design meetings and the rest of the board probably just went like, yeah, why the hell not? Now, depending on where you are in the world, you'll find that the 86 is available in many, many, many different models, um, obviously to suit different markets. In South Africa, however, we call it the GT86. And over here, we've got the low and the high specs as our two variants. Now, apart from some differences to the body and creature comforts on the inside of the cabin, there really isn't much difference between the two. The drivetrain, the engine and the gearbox manual or automatic was left exactly as is so you would get the exact same driving experience and performance no matter which one you hopped into. Now lucky for me I was fortunate enough to find an affordable high spec model with basically every single optional extra ticked. This car has got cruise control, heated seats, satellite navigation, daytime running lights, two-tone 17 inch diamond cut rims and even a useless yet stunning spoiler. Uh, it needs to be said though that the previous owner did switch out this infotainment system uh, with the older one. And I mean, what more can you ask for these days in a car that now costs the same as a new bottom of the range VW Polo? I mean, speaking of interiors though, I just feel like Toyota have knocked this one straight out of the park. To me, it's a perfect blend between a sense of luxury, comfort and sportiness. Everything like these fighter jet like switches down by the gear knob to the Aircon dials which are so smooth just look absolutely mad and everything is within arm's reach You don't even have to take your eyes off the road to reach for something inside the glove compartment However, my favorite part of the interior just has to be these seats I mean come on that looks awesome and not only do they provide the right amount of stability that they don't exactly make you feel Squashed or claustrophobic like some bucket seats do they're basically made of a fusion between Alcantara and leather which is all held together by red stitching and just to sum it up this interior feels like the kind of space you would expect to find in much more expensive cars and you're basically paying a fraction of the cost. It needs to be said that, that I feel that Toyota could have opted for a few more higher quality materials on the hard surfaces, but if you think about it, plastic is very inexpensive and easy to replace when compared to things like wood, stainless steel or real carbon fiber. But um, luckily everything on the interior is blacked out so you don't exactly notice all the plastic parts. To me, what's so great about the way the 86 is styled is the fact that it's striking without being too obnoxious. Yes, when you see one driving past you, you might think it's a bit too flamboyant, but once you start getting up and close with one that's stagnant, you start to realize that it is realistic. The tires are thin with a profile that's affordable, the ride height 
is so good you can go over any bump and even semi-aggressive curbs. I've never once scratched the underside of the car. But once you really start paying attention, you notice that some of the details could make this a potentially special car. Things like the creases on the bonnet and the roof and these small boxes slash 86 badges that you find just underneath the A-pillars. Then when you really start paying attention, you'll notice that Toyota even implemented a small shark's tooth-like pattern on some of the exterior and interior parts. So lastly, just before I hop behind the wheel, let's just run through some of the performance figures. Um, thanks to the Boxer motor, this car is supplied with 147 kilowatts or basically 200 horsepower and just about 205 newton meters of torque. Now combine this with the fact that the car weighs 1.26 tons, Toyota actually claims that the car can go from 0 to 100 in 7 to 8 seconds. So if you are very interested in this time, do go check out our video that we have uploaded recently somewhere up there, down there, who knows where, um, to see what we could actually push out of the car. And yes, you can argue that these statistics aren't exactly anything to ride home to about, but take into account that this car can get a combined fuel consumption of 7.6 liters per 100 kilometers, which is kind of impressive for a car that's naturally aspirated and revs all the way to 7,500 RPM. Once you're behind the wheel though, you immediately forget about all those funky features and details because the 86 just hits you straight in the face with responsiveness and feedback. It's as direct and to the point as someone who's late for work. I've never felt a car that's this precise and direct. It is just mental. And combined with the fact that the suspension is fairly firm, you know exactly what all four wheels are doing every time. And then the next thing you'll notice is the driving position. I mean, thanks to these seats and the fact that your bum is basically touching the tarmac, you get the sense that you're the heart of the car and not just a piece of meat that's being pushed forward by clever machinery. It is sublime. Now, I've obviously done my homework before shooting this video and I've noticed that a lot of emphasis has been put on a center of gravity that's as low as possible. So if you combine this with the fact that the car has a 53% front and 47% rear weight distribution, you just get a car that goes around the corner like you would not believe. It, it basically feels like a large go-kart which is still fast and maneuverable. Um, James actually put it nicely when he said that once you start going around corners quickly, it feels like the car pivots even more to make it go even faster, which is mental. Before you think that this is all a bit too serious for a car this underpowered and light, just remember that Toyota also slapped a limited slip differential on the car, so it can do this all day long. Look, I'm really trying to say all of this as fairly as possible, but the truth is the negatives in the 86 are just vastly outweighed by the positives. Yes, the car is slow. There's basically no luggage space as well. The road noise is deafening and there's a rattle somewhere in the dashboard. But when you're having as much fun as this car can offer, you just don't care. I've been living with this car for nearly three months now, and it hasn't been until recently where I finally discovered why Toyota actually made the 86. It wasn't made for setting up records at the racetrack. It wasn't made for winning at the drag strip. Some cars sound better, some cars look better, and heck, a lot of cars are faster. No, the 86 was made for something special. For you. And for me. And for everyone out there who gets a smile on their face every time they hit the open road. This car takes us back to the essence of motoring by ditching overly complicated technologies in this modern time. And it does all of that without breaking your wallet or threatening to kill you. This is the car for the driver. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If so, please drop a comment down below, hit the like button and subscribe and I'll see all of you guys in the next video. Cheers.